So Lubuntu, thank you so much for making time to share your insights into the future of leadership. Thank you so much for having me for this conversation. I actually feel really honored because um, I know the kind of people and the quality just of character of the people that you've had on this platform. So really, really grateful to be here. Thank you. And it's great to have you on the show. Um, Nobunto, can you tell us where did you grow up? So I grew up in Durban. I am a Durban girl through and through. Um, raised, educated, um, and started my career in Durban. I was raised in an area called, well, in two townships. Um, initially, we lived in the township of Lamontville. And then up until I was 15, we lived uh, in, a, in, in a township in the northern suburbs of, of Durban called Inanda. And then we moved to the suburbs when I was 15 years old. So quite a colorful upbringing um, and quite expo a good exposure to the different pockets of South Africa. And can you tell us what was your dream career when you grew up? So there were two. So um, I wanted to be the president. <laughs> okay. Um, and I mean, I always find that so interesting because um, I remember saying it when I was in about grade seven, but um, friends who I went to school with remember me saying it in grade one already, friends I went to school with in grade one. And I think for me, it was just a recognition of the leadership um, in me. And I suppose the biggest platform where you see leadership is in a president. So that's probably the, 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 the height, I suppose, for me, of an expression of leadership that I was seeing as a child. So that's the one. The other is that I wanted to be a TV host. Um, I would take my mom's cosmetics at her dressing table and I would put them in front of me and I would be having a talk show and I would talk to my audience um, I remember we grew up, it was Felicia Mabuza Sattel, who was uh, the first talk show host that I actually saw and knew. So I wanted, I was inspired by her. And later there was Oprah. Um, and fortunately, I have done that twice. I've hosted two TV shows. So at least got to take two, two, two of the dream, dream careers. That's great. And tell us, Ubuntu, who inspired yeah. you? Or what inspired you in your early days? Sure. I was, maybe let me talk about the what and the who, because it's okay. two different things. In terms of the what, I really, I mean, I explained a little bit of how, where I grew up, but right from the age of about four or five, um, living in the township, I went to school in the suburbs. So I would look at these two worlds you know, um, that was so different. Um, and really they were different along racial lines. You know, you could see the economic um, um, differences in the two areas and it was a, a long racial line. So I was inspired by that, first of all, to know that um, there was more than what was in my own, you know, my own exposure, having been a township kid. Um, then seeing the suburbs from the time I'm about three, four, in fact, it wasn't even four or five, it was about three, four. Then seeing that from that age, um, I was inspired by knowing there was more, but it also inspired me to get into the work that I've gotten into. Even as I ran businesses, for me, it was always about creating economic opportunity, creating opportunity for entrepreneurship for other people. So that inspired me. And then the who, I was inspired by my mom. My mom grew up uh, in the rural village of Ngotu with very, very little. Um, when she tells the story of how she grew up, um, they grew up really poor, like really, really poor. Um, often, you know, struggling to even have shoes to go to school. I've gone and I've seen where they lived and how far she had to travel to school, like over hills and valleys and, and all of that. And she was able to be a woman who was always first in class. She was able to be a leader and Actually, the context was even worse and that girl children were not supposed to go to school beyond like grade three, grade four. And she pushed to be able to go to school until such a time that she could go to college, ultimately go to university um, and in her industry. So she inspired me a 
heck of a lot because after having achieved everything she did, she's still one of the most humble people, if not the most humble person that I know. Now, Ubuntu, you're leading a very impressive leadership career. Looking back over your career, are there any turning points where things could have gone different? Sure. Um, there are many turning points. Uh, I have... I mean, I've had an interesting career and I could have decided, for instance, to stay in corporate uh, because I was in corporate um, in my early career and I was doing well in corporate. I was, you know, being promoted many times in a short space of time and that was going well. So I could have chosen to stay in corporate um, and to go that route. I know I would have been an executive by the time I was 30 or in my early 30s um, had I gone that route. But I made a decision to go into entrepreneurship and to go into serving. I mean, I've served in development organizations, leading the Business Women's Association and, and all those kinds of organizations because I wanted to contribute to economic change in my country. So, you know, the decision to leave the corporate working space was a big turning point in my life. Um, things could have looked different. I'm sure they would have gone well for me, but I think I would have been somebody who was very frustrated because I always had this fire in me and I always had this desire to lead in, you know, contributing to economic change, but also um, from an entrepreneurship perspective to lead in bringing change and, you know, innovation to the way things are done in some of the industries that I've been in. So, so what would you say is driving you today and uh, obviously in the months, the weeks to come, what is your major driving force? My driving force today is the need for leadership in South Africa, the need for strong leadership in South Africa, the need for credible leadership in South Africa, and the need for selfless leadership in South Africa. That drives me Every single day I wake up and I think we're often told that there's a leadership vacuum in South Africa, but there are leaders in South Africa who are willing to serve the country selflessly. That wakes me up because I realize, you know, you can't wait for these leaders. You can't wait for these people that we want to see moving our country forward. I've got to actually become that. So becoming that leader, you know, um, doing everything I can to grow as a person and as a leader and as an individual in becoming the kind of person who can serve South Africa now, that drives me every day. Finding other leaders and working with them who are in the same space and who have the same kind of drive, that is what drives me every day, knowing that there are more of us, there's more, and we've got to find those people and we've got to do this together. Now, Ubuntu, looking into the future, what does the future of leadership mean to you? So when I look into the future, I first of all, um, we're recording this uh, on Women's Man. Um, so significant for me to say the future of, of, of leadership looks like feminine leadership. And for me, feminine leadership doesn't only mean that we are going to be seeing more women come into leadership, but we're going to be seeing more of the qualities that women possess as leaders being the ones that drive the future and that drive us into the future in industry, um, whether in communities, whether um, in public, in the public um, leadership space, we're going to see that being what drives us. And some of the feminine qualities that we're going to be seeing are collaboration, you know, that more collaborative approach in leading, we're going to be seeing um, a courageous kind of leadership. Um, we're going to be seeing more of a um, selfless kind of leadership, um, a leadership that's driven by the need to serve, by the need to impact. Um, we're going to be seeing a leadership that doesn't only take and extract, but that also then gives back and pours into. Um, and I mean, we could have a whole nother discussion about what that looks like in the economy, because we have been living in quite an ext extractive economy. So what does it look like to then not be as extractive? What does it look like when we are not extracting as much out of people, when we're not extracting as much out of the environment for the purposes of sustainability, for instance? That's what the future of leadership looks like. Thank you. And Nobuntu, 
What have you learned from your own leadership journey that you consider most important for building future leaders? What do we have to do, as you are doing it already, to build more future leaders, to empower more future leaders? To be more courageous. So the, um, the future needs the courage to be able to do things differently from what they have always been and from how they have always been done. And that really is what I'm learning. And that's what I believe that future leaders or leaders of the future are going to be needing to learn, to be able to trust what you know, to be able to trust what you see, to be able to trust what you can forecast into the future and to be able to do that. And that takes courage. So as we go into the future, we're going to need to be more courageous. We're going to need to trust even just that inner instinct, you know, that says this is the direction that things are going to be going. Imagine there were people who trusted what they were sensing about the future before the pandemic, um, because I know there were people who were sensing that, you know, there could be things that need to change, but you don't change them. You know, there could have been people who could have been um, sensing that, oh, we really need to be becoming more virtual in the world. We, we really need to be um, taking on technology more that allows us to work across um, countries and across continents and not taking that step until they really had to because the pandemic came and forced us to. So to trust that instinct in where, in the direction that the world is going, in the direction that change needs to go, absolutely important. And that takes courage. So I can't underscore it enough. We need a generation of courageous leaders. Thank you. Now, Lubuntu, these are challenging times as the world is stumbling from one crisis into the next. What is your advice for future leaders in terms of challenges? What are some of the biggest challenges they should expect to encounter and hopefully overcome in their career? So I think one of the biggest challenges is going to be um, resistance to change. As we change things um, and as we dare to do things differently um, and as we take on this courage as a generation, there will be some resistance to change. And I think that that's going to be really important for leaders of the future to be able to get people, first of all, to buy in. So it's going to be important to learn how to have people buy into the vision, how to have people buy into the need for change. That's going to be really, really important. Um, so that's one challenge. I think we're also going to have um, challenges where, and we already have them, where we're working um, in an environment where there are a number of crises, you know, um, around the world. We are having a shift from a, an era of leadership to a new era of leadership. And part of that means that, you know, some, some of the leaders that we have, particularly when you talk about public leadership, um, have really not done well for the respective countries. And you have countries where there's economic issues, you have countries where there's issues in healthcare, you know, there's issues, whatever, whichever area in education, whichever area you find yourself in, there are crises everywhere. So I think part of the challenges are going to have to be, how do we turn around a crisis? How do we use crisis as opportunity, you know, um, as we transition and as we have this shift into a new generation of leaders? That's going to be critical for us as leaders today, for us as we lead into the future, in learning how to transform moments of crisis into moments of opportunity because challenges and crisis are something that we're seeing all too often now but you know we need to be able to take to, to to be innovative to be courageous as i said before and turn those crises around turn those challenges around into opportunity and we're in a generation that has better opportunity to do that um we are living in an, in a world um where innovation has meant that there's quite a bit of um opportunity and platform to be able to turn things around it's easier to collaborate even across um, the borders of countries and continents. And so, yeah, that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to take that opportunity. We're going to have to take what the world has presented us and the progress of the world and use that to turn the challenges and crisis into opportunity. Thank you. And Ubuntu, as a mentor to future leaders, can you maybe share a success story or two 
where you mentored an upcoming leader and that person took your advice to heart? You know, what's interesting about my mentees <laughs> and what has happened in the life of my mentees is that interestingly, they all tend to leave formal employment to pursue <laughs> to pursue um, some of the things that have been keeping them up at night. So um, one of my mentees who was in um, the, the, the beauty space has actually gone and left um, formal, formal employment and she's gone and started like a wellness um, institute because what she cares about more is holistic wellness. Um, and in this wellness institute, she's actually servicing significant people, leaders and in industry leaders and in government and all of that. And so walking her through that journey and having watched that journey for me has been really, really inspirational because it took a heck of a lot of courage from her side. But also it took her being able to build something that she hasn't seen. You know, so it's not necessarily something, you know, the, the way her institute is holistic and is, is focused on leaders and, and people of significance in the world um, and in the country and in the continent. It's taken her taking something she hasn't seen and she hasn't been able to emulate from somewhere and say, I'm going to make this thing happen and I'm going to be a pioneer and do this. And yeah, so that's a story that um, has really, really been been inspiring for me. Thank you. And Lubuntu, looking back over your own leadership journey, are there any role models of leadership that you have encountered and maybe worked with that you would recommend future leaders should study and learn from? So I'm inspired um, incredibly by um, Kuseli Jack, who is senior in our organization. He's a trusted advisor in our organization, but he's also somebody who has led for all his life and has done so with humility and with so much service and with so much giving of himself. I am absolutely inspired by his willingness to continue to lead selflessly. Uh, I'm inspired by his courage, but I'm also inspired by the fact that he's somebody who was um, a struggle hero and an activist in the times of apartheid. And he has never, ever, come across to me as somebody who is bitter or resentful about that or somebody who holds any kind of hatred. He is just still such a kind person and someone who's not afraid to lead from a place of kindness. And so I take so much inspiration from him. Um, I, I, I genuinely have so many incredible leaders around me, but I think currently he's somebody who inspires me to give of myself. I am also very inspired uh, by Dr. Mampela Rampele, who said something to me, which has I've held on to, um, and you know, who often is able to give such wisdom when it comes to leading. Um, she's a, a leader who's led in diverse spaces. She's a medical doctor. She's been in business. She's been in public service. Um, and she said something to me about leading as a woman. And she said that often women, because they spend all their career fighting, when they finally make it, you know, to the pinnacles of leadership, they continue fighting instead of leading. And so that's been something that I've carried. And, you know, I've coined um, a saying for myself that says, um, be, don't fight, just be. Um, my leadership mantra when it comes to that is be, because the leader that I am exists within me and it is what I am. So I need to just be that leader. Now, Lubuntu, where can our listeners follow you and how should they connect with you? So I am on all the social media platforms. Uh, I am as uh, typically millennial as they get. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter at Lubuntu SA. I'm on Instagram at Lubuntu SA. And I'm on Facebook as well. On Facebook and LinkedIn, I am Lubuntu Shazo Webster. And I'm on TikTok. I've recently joined TikTok uh, I'm not quite that generation, but I want to get the hang of that. Great, great. And last but not least, Nubuntu, what is your advice for the future, for the millions of learners out there who are looking to finish school, to enter the world of work? What are maybe one or two success principles they should keep in mind? Give yourself permission to change your mind. 
um you know when we when you're young and you start a career um there's no way you know what the world has for you you know there's no way you know what is out there and all the different opportunities that the world has for you and um, so it's important to keep yourself open to the changing forms of leadership leadership can take on very many different forms so it's important to be aware of what exists for you in the moment to be able to take on opportunities and it's important for you to be aware of what the consistent thread is in that i i have had um a career that has been in different industries and sectors but there's a there's a thread you know my thread is economic justice but you must find your thread and not be afraid to change your mind about how you express what it is that you believe your purposes or what it is that you believe you're meant to bring into leadership um, in the world today. So yeah, give yourself permission to change your mind, find your thread, hold on to your thread, be open to expressing it in different forms, be open to expressing even your leadership in different forms and in different ways. Find your threads. It sounds like the title of your new book. Am I wrong? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Where would I find the time? I really, really want to write a book. Like right now, I have so much to say and I'm experiencing so much and I really want to share it. Um, but sure, I need to find the time. And it sounds like you've just put a challenge out there for me. I have, I have. <laughs> so thank you so much, Lobuntu, for sharing your insights and your wisdom into the future Thank of you. Here. So Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nick.